Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD, and welcome to what I'm calling installment 15A of the IC7300 from A to Z series. This is just a little follow-up on our compressor episode from the other night. I wanted to follow up on the mic distortion that uh, we were getting and I inadvertently demonstrated in my mixer and getting RF into the shack. What you're seeing here is the antenna setup that I have at my father-in-law's house. As I said, it's kind of temporary. This is an end-fed wire, very similar to the one that I reviewed, uh, the EF53 at my house in Kansas. And the key difference here is that the wire on this one is about 140 feet long going up into the pine trees. And the 9 to 1 unun on this one is homemade. I uh, got myself a toroid and some wire and found the plans on the internet and made an unun for myself. You can see that here. And I wanted to show you some of the minor changes that I made since the other night. The first change that I made is I rerouted the counterpoise wire. You can see it going up along the top of the beam on the porch there. And it goes down to the end of the porch and around the corner, and it just kind of hangs down at the end. It's about 25 to 30 feet long in total. Prior to that, I had it running down along this rain gutter parallel with that piece of coax and then going along the bottom of the porch here. And then it went around the other side, similar to how it's going now up at the top of the porch. But it was running down this gutter parallel. Then the other change that I made was on the ballon. The choke ballon that you see there which is just a loop of coax or several loops of coax that was originally about five coils of coax and I've now upped it to eight coils of coax and then tie wrapped it together so I've got a little bit more inductance there to choke out the RF. That's the only two changes that I've made so let's go take a look inside and see what that does for us. Okay, let's have a look and see what those changes uh, have done for us. I do intend to put in a full station ground here. Uh, we're staying at my father-in-law's house, and we're going to be visiting here a little bit more frequently. So I'm going to set up a good station ground and a little bit more permanent setup here. But before I did that, I wanted to test this with just the additional turns on my choke ballon and just rerouting the counterpoise away from the coax and no other changes at all to see what that did for us. So let's have a look. We're on the same frequency, or pretty close, to what we were on the other night. And we're at 50% power. I've got the mic gain set the same. I've got the compression set to 8, and I have the compression turned on. So let's see uh, what the audio sounds like now. WA2IVD testing. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Hello, testing one, two, three, four, five. Now that was the audio through the microphone. Here you can listen to it again, and this is the audio through the rig. WA two IVD testing. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And then just to finish out the experiment. Let's turn the RF power all the way up to 100%. And again, once again, it's evening here. So 15 meters is pretty much dead. 20 meters has been much better lately. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. WA2IVD testing. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hello, test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there you have it. There's our audio with uh, just a few minor improvements. No changes to the ground. I expect that'll help as well, but uh, you can do some amazingly small things sometimes and get RF out of your equipment, out of your shack, as long as you make sure RF isn't coming back down your coax. So, just wanted to show you that example and uh, help you understand some of the things that you can do to Help get RF out of your shack. Well, there you have it. 
it's pretty amazing what just a few minor changes can do to improve an RFI situation where you're getting RF in the shack or into your equipment. If you didn't happen to watch, or more importantly, listen to the IC7300 from A to Z number 15, uh, go back and take a look at it and listen when I'm transmitting, and you'll hear the distortion that I'm talking about that I was getting into my mixer and microphone. And you can clearly see the difference that just these few, few minor changes did uh, when I tested the same thing tonight. In the last episode, I mentioned the importance of grounding, and grounding is very important for electrical safety, for lightning protection, for fire safety, and a variety of reasons. But as I'm recording this, it's the beginning of June. Field day is coming up in just a couple of weeks, and I did want to do a little experimenting and illustrate what you can do sometimes without necessarily changing the ground system or adding a ground system because when you're doing temporary or portable setups you don't always have the opportunity to do the best grounding system you may not have any opportunity to drive in ground rods you may not be able to bond your equipment to the building ground or you may not even be in a building so sometimes you can make some other changes to your setup and make some amazing differences without going into a really detailed and involved grounding system. Hope you enjoyed this. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.